the dark world of tomorrow, when vampires rule the night. From the darkest depths of hell, the ultimate form of evil awakens. This has been difficult for all of us. If you knew my daughter, you'd understand. Her loss is more than this old soul can bear. I'll give you 20 million. It may be too late for her. What then? Just bring her back one way or the other. After the destruction of our world. After the dead stalk the living. After the desire for blood rules all. The only hope left is the one they call D. She's here by her own choice. You kidnapped the girl. To today we review and today we're going to be reviewing Vampire D Bloodlust. This It began production in 1997 and was completed with the intention of being shown in American theaters. It was shown in 12 theaters across the United States and received general positive reception from American critics. This is the second installment. The first one was actually Vampire Hunter D and this would be its sequel to it. Uh, the film was actually one of my favorite ones growing up and to this day I really enjoy it. There's a wide variety of different reasons for it and I still like to view this uh, film to this day. The film actually has a different kind of perspective towards other things, uh, types of films like these as well compared to uh, Van Helsing and some of the other uh, vampire films. This film is actually centered around Charlotte, a young woman who is abducted by the vampire mayor, a nobleman who is known to not harm humans. However, the father actually hires Vampire Hunter D to track her down and rescue her. They originally uh, offer him $10 million, but he says that that's not enough. And then the father basically doubles it to $20 million. Um, however, the brother actually hires Marcus Brothers, uh, Vampire Hunters as well, that are notorious on their missions as well. So the leaders, I mean, the, the group is actually composed of Borgoff a hawking man named Note, a blade master named Kyle, and a physically disabled uh, psychic named Groove, and a woman named Le uh, Layla, who hunts vampires because of a personal grudge rather than for monetary gain. Uh, these two actually groups, uh, Vampire Hunter D and the notorious uh, Marcus Brothers, they're on a race to basically find uh, Charlotte and either do one or the other kill her or rescue her depending on her uh, status however Myers knows this and he actually hires mutant barbarians barbarians or barbarians uh, a group of lethal mercenary uh, killers uh, they consist of Caroline a shapeshifter Benji a shadow manipulator and my Mashira, a werewolf shapeshifting as well. Uh, the film's actually do, does a really great job in illustrating both the characters, narrative, the dialogue, and a little bit of backstory as well that comes into play greatly into the film. The film additionally does do a great job in providing emotional illustrations with facial uh, construction as well which is one thing that I always really enjoyed which was the facial form of how they express their feelings. This is a dumb fear, a half vampire half human and throughout the film we see the struggle that he actually has beyond his personal struggle of who he is and also what people around him think and view him as. From the very beginning of the film, we see that he's outcasted by the humans and throughout the film, we also end up seeing that he's outcasted by those like him. Main reason is because he kills vampires. <laughs> and unlike other films where we see a vampire killing other vampires, D actually has his own kind of characteristics that differ him from other characters as well from other films. Beyond his iconic costume that has the black hat, the black 
coat, the sword. He also has something very unique on his left hand. He actually has what you would kind of consider a symbiote or in this case his best friend and it's a hand that actually has a mouth eyes nose and everything and it's able to talk to d on several occasions throughout the film it actually has a very unique power where it's able to suck in things which comes in handy when d actually is within one of the curses that was placed in by one of the mercenaries we don't really see Dee's reactions to various different outcomes. He's a very subtle individual and throughout the film he has his own kind of simple form of interaction. Even when faced with various outputs of danger, Dee doesn't actually change his mode. He just stands there and basically just prepares to whatever is going to occur. Within the story, Dee has a simple plan and that's it. Cap, Get the girl back one way or another and that's it. He doesn't find whether or not she's in love or anything like that, which, to tell you the truth, this was one of the films that I was a little surprised and I showed my wife as well. One, This is one of the films that I first showed my wife of anime and she was pretty surprised, mainly because she wasn't prepared for the twist, which was it's a love film. I mean, you see it as an action flick or an action film or whatever, you know, have you seen other ones as well, but this one was an actual love between uh, the vampire and the woman. And we see Mir's uh, love for, for, um, for his lover in terms of how he restrains himself from actually drinking her blood or attacking her. And throughout the film, you understand that all he really wants is to be alone with her. To love her and his main objective Mir's main objective is actually to go to Countess uh, Car 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 Carmilla and basically take shelter in her castle um, so that he and and uh, Caroline I mean I'm sorry not Caroline whoa uh, Charlotte uh, can be able to be in peace and love each other the way they want to be loved in addition, one thing that I did like was the evolution of Layla, her character from being an individual who completely dislikes and hates vampires to later on understanding D and appreciating him. Towards the end of the film, I actually really, well, I enjoyed really seeing her character develop. And aside from this, I really enjoyed that the film didn't have a lovey-dovey scene with her and Dee. Instead, it was more of a friendship that came about their conflicts between their uh, differences. And later on, it became a friendship that lasted for years, as we saw at the end. Aside from having a very well-developed story and great dialogue, one of the key features that really attracted me to this film was its illustration and its way of portraying what it wants you to see there are various scenes within the film that leaves you in awe wow this is really great some of the illustrations that you don't really see now in days right there If you haven't had a chance to check out this film, go ahead and check it out. I highly recommend it. It's one of my all-time favorite animes to watch. And honestly, it holds to it holds the test of time. It has a great visuals. It has great story, great dialogue. It's perfect. I've always enjoyed watching it. I've never had that feeling like, oh, here it is again. Every time I finish watching it, I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. I'll post up a link that I found on YouTube that apparently has a whole video. So you might want to check it out. Thank you so much for watching this uh, video and thank you for being patient with me. This is the first time I do one of these uh, videos of reviewing a film. I hope to do more of them. Uh, please, like, please like, subscribe, and if you have any comments or questions, write them on the bottom, you know. And I hope everybody has a great day. Lots of love, kisses, and hope everybody safe out there. Thank you.